like 15 minutes, short, sharp. Have you also have you all found a friend to sit next to? Uh, I, shall I begin? Thank you, uh, Christophe Egre, for your uh, helpful shush. Uh, my name is David West, and I am the uh, erstwhile partner, old couple of uh, Christophe Egre and David West, Egre West. Uh, we are celebrating our 10th year uh, birthday party later this year, and uh, so we're getting older and greyer and uh, hopefully a bit wiser. Uh, and um, it's, it's wonderful to uh, be up after the illustrious Liza, and um, I personally think you nailed that, and that was really, really interesting. Um, uh, my slides aren't quite as uh, illustrious as those. Um, I think Christoph and I came from a practice uh, called Allsop Architects uh, previously, and um, Christopher was one of the directors, and uh, I, I had this extraordinary title of Director of Big, uh, which was pretty thick, pretty cool thing to have on a, a bright pink business card on a Thursday night. Uh, who are you? David West, Director of Big. I think there's this chap called Bjark Ingalls over in Copenhagen who's doing pretty good right now, who stole, who stole that somehow. Do you see that? Um, Big stood for big architecture, and uh, it, it got a lot of booze at the time, and it got a lot of, well, were you sure about that, particularly from the urban design sort of uh, crew, which is probably sort of most of tonight. And I think the crucial thing um, that we did was give seriously ambitious visions uh, to places. Frankly, completely the other end of the scale uh, of the things that we're talking about tonight. So I'm reflecting on that as I'm sitting listening to, to Liza, actually, because Lots has changed, and um, I, I, I almost guess that if one says the master plan is dead now, that maybe it will come back to life again in 10 years' time, because partly some of this is to do with semantics, and part of it is actually to do with time and zeitgeist and feel and words, and if I say everything's adaptable, everybody smiles. If I say everything's flexible, everybody's really, really happy. Uh, and if I say it evolves and evolves and evolves, it's a no-brainer. Of course uh, it does. You know, life evolves. Um, and I think it's quite interesting, the kind of the, the detail and strategy thing that, that Liza said. When Christoph and I set up our practice, we set up our practice to say, actually, maybe we don't need to be the big name. You know, maybe we don't need to have such strong authorship. We will be Egre West and we'll be Studio Egre West because it will be our studio that makes the work, that makes the place. And the studio will invite in a lot of people to be involved in it, uh, whether they be architects, urban designers, landscape architects, artists, clients, <laughs> investors, landowners, developers, etc. And we will all work together. And that was incredibly important that studio came first. And as we're getting more successful and as our studio is growing, it's incredibly vexing because we still want to be studio. And, and that's, uh, that's key, we think, in the way that we approach things. But our mantra, uh, and I remember being uh, kind of laughed at for it at our seventh year birthday by Paul Finch, um, is strategy with specificity. Apparently specificity doesn't actually work, uh, exist as a, as, a, as, a, as a word in English language. I think it's something that Christoph made up. Um, but really it's that, that zooming in and out of the detail, the big picture of the detail, the big picture of the detail. And so for me, whether the master plan is dead or not, and the flexible framework is, uh, is, is the future, um, the, the desire and the, 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 the insistency to go big, small, big, small, big, small, all the way through every single project that we ever get appointed to work on, for me, is the answer to the question. And it has been since, since 10 years ago. So it's not even that zeitgeist. It's big, small, big, small, big, small. Because um, our practice is 50-50, urban designer, architect. Uh, and uh, we, we've done that. And we keep doing that. And maybe that's a good thing. Um, and so I, I wanted to open with that. Um, uh, we always set up uh, principles uh, for projects. We always have uh, key things that we make everybody talk about at the start of a project. Um, we're a little bit more um, finding the way and a bit more intuitive than some other practices. Um, I often worry that we're not quite as intelligent as some of the practices and that we don't investigate hard enough. Uh, Christoph's far more intelligent than I, as he often says, we should work, work harder on theory and work harder on why and work harder on um, uh, kind of our professional side than just 
following our nose and following a story. Um, but uh, I, I still maintain my side of the, the table is just to, to work with uh, whoever we have <laughs> as our material uh, to discover the place that will evolve. And it's, so far, it's not let us down. But we always set up uh, principles that um, help shape our projects, however big or however small. Um, one of the principles that we find always really crucial is looking beyond boundaries, looking beyond red line boundaries. Whenever we get a site to look at, uh, we always say, OK, thanks very much now. What's the bigger play? How could this place be better because of this thing that we're going to work on together? And it always changes the orientation of the scheme. It most of the time means a, a new ingredient or a new element actually introduced to the project. It always uh, endeavours sort of new connections or new weavings. It almost always means that other people are invited in, other designers and other kind of uh, protagonists. But it's absolutely key to, uh, to our practice and to uh, the way that we approach uh, master planning or framework planning. Collective authorship um, is, is something that I think very much is part of our time and something that I think won't go away. I, I think very happily uh, the, 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 this is how we all now work. Um, there are still wonderful, wonderful, wonderful designers that still have the title of star architect. And having worked with Will, I'm, I'm never going to throw eggs at that because I think it has incredibly important, uh, incredible importance, uh, actually. Um, but even those star architects can work with a huge variety of other designers of all types and of all trainings. And I think that sense of collective authorship and the, uh, I think the, I love the idea of passing the, uh, the baton, uh, it, it's inevitable. And I remember having a big idea 15 years ago to um, put the whole of Bradford one landscape, many views, draining into a big pool. I'll probably never get credited for that idea because there's been about 10 other designers since. But the other day I went to an awards session and everybody was celebrating this extraordinary lake that sits in the middle of the Bradford. 15 years ago, that it was quite nice to see it's happened. Uh, and it's quite loved, and that's great. And it was derided at the time as ridiculous, but actually it's quite nice. 15 years. So there's no point in getting stressed. It's a crucial part of uh, collective authorship. Just put your best ideas on the table and roll on. There's my friend Christoph. He didn't realise he was going to star in the show here. Uh, narrative unlocks place. Um, we find that if you haven't got a story, you haven't got a project, <laughs> you haven't got a place and you haven't got a, 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 a cat in hell's chance of delivering something that someone might want to hang out in. Um, uh, I'm sure I didn't say that as quite as elegantly as uh, Liza, but it's really, really crucial uh, to sort of build the narrative of the place. There is always a story behind the layers and fabric that, that we inherit, and it always makes that project so much richer and so much more desirable, uh, and it always takes us on these wonderful, wonderful journeys of specificity. Um, flexible frameworks. I like that. That's even bitmapped and blurred, but it's still clear. Um, that was uh, a product of about six months of intensive work. Uh, it looks like nothing. Uh, it's the East Croydon master plan. I remember saying at the time, this is the most boring master plan we've ever authored. And uh, we worked brilliantly with an amazing client, London Borough of Croydon, to do it. And um, the brilliant thing was we didn't try to make the perfect illustrative plan that everybody falls in love with. We simply try to coerce six different uh, landholders, parties, um, agents, uh, owners, uh, and actually three or four different architects on both sides of the tracks to work together on the most important thing, which was the public realm. And the most important thing beyond the public realm was the thing that was going to open up the whole project, which was a bridge, a new bridge, uh, to connect and, and weave, weave things together. And you know what? This was like 15 years of, of hard yakka before suddenly Croydon said, hey, why don't we make an alternative type of plan, a plan that actually gets people to work together. Within six months, everybody agreed, and within one year, the bridge was built. It's one of the fastest turnarounds I've ever experienced, uh, and uh, that flexibility now can be inherited and woven into. I was absolutely delighted and surprised to land at the bridge, uh, at the opening party of the bridge, to realise that Lisa had even been appointed, let alone made the most extraordinary space out front of the bridge that was almost more beautiful than the bridge. It was great. Wow, that was cool to see. Um, so uh, that flexible framework of 
not getting too stressed about the building lines, the absolute design codes. Just get great designers to make great things and make them work outside of their normal envelope and it's going to be all right as long as the public realm is woven and considered in detail. And so that was founding event night. Sorry, guys, the, the space is sort of creeping, creeping off the page. It was a bit thrown together. But it was a, it was a great, great night, you know, fireworks and, and everything. Um, but crucially... Uh, this one piece um, uh, links everybody. Uh, everybody put their hands in the pockets, the public, the private, everybody together to make this place anew and to allow this place to, to start again and actually see a, a completely different dynamic. Um, I love the concept of founding events. Founding events don't need to be huge pieces of infrastructure. They can be sketches on the wall. They can be pieces of graffiti that say, I love you, will you marry me? Uh, which drove our entire approach to uh, Park Hill alongside Hawkins Brown. And um, it's fascinating, I think, to just see what special things can sort of unlock sites and unlock places. Um, forging connections is another obsession of the studio, uh, where, we, where we, we get a brief that we think, wow, that just doesn't make sense. Spend a million pounds renewing the pavements on either side of the road, but why? They'll just look the same as they did, but slightly cuter. Can we spend that million pounds on doubling the length of the intervention and connecting the train station with the high street that's disconnected? Yeah, great idea. And can we make it look like a bright green stripy tie? Wow, that's a bit different. Um, and uh, the connection is forged. As this is called rebooting the master plan, I thought I'd have one slide just to, just to play with it. Uh, installing software. Um, this, is, this is me having a chat with some interesting... Uh, they're wearing soft outfits, so I thought, software. So uh, this is me having a chat with some people at a, at a community consultation in Canary Wharf, which is going to see some extraordinary change, urbanists and architects. I think there's an estimated 50 towers, uh, circa 45 to 50, maybe even 70 stories planned in the next 10 years. I think that's an injection of 80,000 people into a, a kilometre. Um, which is something to behold and uh, watch, watch that space. But intriguingly, even in the context of that, and I'm going to use it, hyperdensity, as, as hyperdensity as Hong Kong and maybe a bit more, these people said, hey, we love your ski. I was expecting to have a chat about, uh, what? 45 stories, 45 stories, 50 stories, are you sure? They said, we love your scheme because there's a playground in it. <laughs> and, no, 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 we really love your scheme, there's a school. <laughs> in it and there's a health centre and there's, there's, a, there's a couple of nice things here and there no one was thinking about the height no one was thinking about volume no one was thinking it was just purely about the software and it was a real reminder and if anybody's been to look mum no hands around the corner and sense the zeitgeist sense that sense of community that is basically three guys and their bikes that just said why don't we actually do more than men bikes the culture that's just <laughs> emanated from that one small intervention of, in, in Old Street. Now, everybody puts luck on their hands in their CGIs because they desperately want a piece of that. Uh, the software is absolutely key. And, and, and uh, more and more and more, when we work, we work with clients, we think, well, let, what are we going to do first? Who are we going to bring in? And how are we going to work with the people around the corner and the people around the corner and pull those, pull those, pull those to actually uh, make everybody face the same direction? Public realm as DNA. Um, you know, this is a picture of our delightful um, uh, building in Clapham, but actually it wouldn't be half as delightful if we didn't have the, the foreground square, which just gives that sort of that breathing space onto the high street, just makes this opportunity for some extraordinary letters, library, uh, to sort of tell a story and have some fun in, in the public realm. Um, but public realm is DNA, we really mean that. I think setting the tone of a place, particularly in wider framework plans, um, and I, I still can't believe that landscapes are seen as a sort of a secondary <laughs> profession to the architecture profession. To me, they're absolutely even Stevens, if, if not even more important in, in, in today, in terms of the way that that actually progresses and changes people's feeling of place. This is a strap line which we coined um, when we won the, um, one, we were one of the winners of the Royal Docks uh, competition. Well, we uh, it was called Meanwhile Newham, I think it was. We were talking about uh, how, uh, how how places can evolve, and we we put put in an idea of a floating pool. The floating pool was in uh, one of the docks. 
Once we won, we said, well, it could be even better. We said, yeah, it could be even better. We floated it around the corner. The floating uh, uh, pool then turned into a floating village. Uh, and then it became really, really exciting, and really, really sought after. And a certain politician said, hey, we really need a, Lon a London's floating village. And then it carried on into the sort of the ether. And there are five <laughs> or six developers punching out to win that opportunity at the moment. We, of course, didn't carry the baton on that one. But the seed was sown. But what I found during that process was that there was amazing, amazing kind of parties and amazing ideas. Canny Ash with Caravan Sarai and Newham and this amazing guys and girls that tried to set up this party destination in Pontoon Dock. Utterly derided when it went wrong. How wrong is that? You know why it went wrong? Because the money was pulled. Everybody said, it's meanwhile, it's cheap, it's free, but then we're not going to give it any money. Because meanwhile, it's sort of cool, it's temporary, uh, but then we won't support it. And the crucial thing about this statement is, meanwhile is worthwhile. It shouldn't be seen as meanwhile, it shouldn't be seen as temporary. If you think about what a market does for a high street, the market was the high street before the high street was called the high street it was the thing that made our spines and our streets and our arteries it what grows places so why would we think of anything else as not worthwhile it's it's the starting point it's the place of exchange it's how places grow um this is the movement cafe um by uh, Mor morag myerskoff which started the movement scheme in greenwich I almost wish this had stayed as the permanent thing. It's absolutely joyful, joyful cafe uh, and event space uh, and um, uh, more of that and, and more of that taken very seriously as it, I think, is, is crucial. Um, and I think what we find is the work that we do with communities is really about planting seeds uh, within those communities during the master plan framework plan, whatever you want to call it, plan uh, process, um, where, you know, for example, here we, we worked with a, 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 group, a group of artists to actually discover uh, a, new, a new place, the House of Fairy Tales, uh, uh, within a site that we were working on in Canning Town, and said, well, why don't we work with you? You're already here, let's grow you into the rest of the community, and then start to layer everything else up and around. And we found it fascinating how much momentum we were able to gather then, uh, and much more specificity about the kind of the workshop spaces, the, the making places and the, the nature of the scheme that we provided, um, which I think is all positive. Have I got two minutes left? Yes. Okay. Um, I'll give you one quick case study, um, uh, 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 which is uh, a, a project very close uh, to, to our hearts at the studio. Um, and I think, strangely, whilst it actually looks like a relatively normal master plan or flexible framework... Um, Deep-seated in it is a real care about nurturing all the things that I've touched upon uh, in, in, in those, those key principles that we have. It really is utterly, utterly driven by narrative and place uh, making. Um, so the old vinyl factory, uh, when, we, when we were given the pr project to work on and to master, master plan, lead architect, all those ego-making uh, titles, um, by Cathedral Group, it was called London Gate. And uh, I just have to pause for a moment. This building was called London Gate 1. This building was called London Gate 2. This building was called London Gate 3. And uh, this was the business park, car park laid out a little bit like Stockley Park, but not quite as cute. And, uh, and then there was the rest of the sort of the master plan that was well, you know. London Gate! And it's called London Gate because this is a crossfire station to be called Hayes and Harlington. And that's what we inherited. About one afternoon's worth of investigation, one, after, one whole afternoon, it's just like five years of master planning and, 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 and loads of rubbish, we discovered this was the birthplace of rock and roll. This was uh, His Majesty's voice, and then lastly EMI, and, and, and. There were some serious amazing things that went on here. So how could it possibly be called London Gate, you know, it's like madness. This is the old vinyl factory. No brainer, the vinyl factory, it's a bit old now. The old vinyl factory. And these are the sort of scenes that went on there in this completely and utterly woven carpet of mixed use stuff. There's almost not an inch of public space to see in this site. It was just tight, rammed, amazing structures, big ones, small ones, packed in together. So how could we possibly sort of be kind of looking at a loose fit master plan? We should be talking about a tight urban place. And we worked very, very closely uh, with uh, two, three other different architects um, uh, to pull together an actually really simple framework plan um, that connected a sequence of spaces together, not surprisingly called the groove. 
uh, and the groove. Sorry about that one, Les. <laughs> Not illustrious. <laughs> the, the groove, I'll get there. The, the groove that cuts through a space called Powerhouse Square and then it takes us to Vinyl Square, a cheeky little place called Gramophone Grove where you can listen to tunes all day. And every single building has a name. So this building is the Gate Bowl. <laughs> you probably see that. Um, there's the boiler house, the powerhouse, the machine store, the veneer store, the recording studios, at the cabinet building with a giant cabinet on the top, and, 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 and. And much more important than that CGI, which I actually loathe, uh, it was just something we thought was clever because we had the aerial photographs, but almost means nothing, uh, is this photo. And, and for, for CGI's, I think they're pretty special because you get a sense of scale, get a sense of story. This is the boiler house sort of slightly... Uh, boiling itself up on the side there. That's the reinvented powerhouse at the end of the Vista. It was the powerhouse back in the day. It now will be the powerhouse of the entire development. It will also be a spit and sawdust venue that you can sort of actually do sort of new recording space and, and, um, and, and then that will then gra gravitate to a kind of a, a vinyl academy which is quite an offbeat thing that we're looking to pursue. Uh, a new square, new stories, everything given completely and utterly new life and new names and a dog. Um, to sort of really get uh, a totally new sense of place and a sense of ambition. And most crucially, Cathedral Group, uh, our client on this one, are pushing, 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 pushing. Once that seed was sown, wow, let's have the old vinyl factory recording sessions. Let's record again. Let's make some more music. Let's think about T-shirts. Let's think about records. Let's think about Boris. Let's think about coming together. Let's think about um, a canteen. Let's think about an amazing uh, new uh, pop-up uh, studio. Let's wrap the, uh, the, 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 the powerhouse uh, for a little while. And, 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 and. And I think the crucial thing with this is that um, uh, we worked with narrative, we worked with story, we worked with place, and it's already so much bigger, <laughs> so much more amazing than it was. And we're a year into the project and starting to really see how everything else will come about. So, um, yeah, that was just my um, catch-up notes. Thank you very much.